I'm in Antarctica, and it feels like another planet. Our research facility, a jumble of metal and glass, looks so out of place here. It's all sharp angles and reflective surfaces, standing out against the ice's endless white and the sky's clear blue. It's a fortress built to keep the wilderness of this place at bay. Inside, it's all recycled air and artificial light. It's warm, sure, but it doesn't feel like it. The air's too dry, and there's a constant hum from the machines that keep us alive. It starkly contrasts the silence outside, where the only sounds are the wind and the occasional ice crack. I'm Dr. John Rigby, a geophysicist. I grew up in Vermont, a world away from this frozen wilderness. Back there, the hills are green, and the air is fresh, unlike the sterile, recycled stuff I'm breathing. I used to love hearing about explorers and adventurers, those who dare to venture into the unknown. Those stories pushed me towards a career in earth sciences, a way to escape the chaos of my home life. Now, here I am, a place that's both beautiful and terrifying in its way. When I got the chance to join this expedition, I didn't hesitate. It wasn't just another research kick but a chance to unlock some of the world's greatest mysteries. Walking through the facility, I can't help but feel a deep connection to this place. It's like I'm meant to be in this alien landscape of ice and snow. Everything from my past, the good and the bad, seems so insignificant now. The ice formation around the facility are like nothing I've ever seen. They tower over us, imposing and majestic, sculpted by the wind into shapes that almost seem to deliberate. It's a world that doesn't care about us, a reminder of how small and temporary we are in the grand scheme. I went out towards the base camp, where my team members were waiting for me so they could start drilling in the dense portion of ice. As I entered the room, a mystery was hidden beneath layers of ice, something that's been calling to us through seismic readings. They're irregular and baffling, but they speak of something more, something hidden. We start drilling. It's not just ice we're cutting through. It's time, layers of history. The deeper we go, the more I feel we're on the verge of something monumental. It's not just a geological anomaly. We're waking something up. Suddenly, one of my team members, Sarah, rushes in, her eyes wide with urgency. The drilling team needs a decision now. The ice layer's thicker than we thought. They're saying if we don't complete the drilling by tomorrow, we might lose our window. I pause, feeling the weight of her words. Tell them to push forward. I say firmly. We can't miss this chance. Outside, the Antarctic landscape looms over us. Ice formations, massive and imposing, stand like guardians of a forgotten world. The wind shapes the snow into eerie ridges and valleys, a labyrinth that could easily swallow us whole. This place, it's indifferent to us, but it feels like it's watching, waiting. The anomaly has been a secret in the scientific community for years. I thought it might be a new mineral deposit or some strange geological structure. We've heard about this anomaly for years, back when I was just starting. Everyone had theories but nobody knew for sure. We couldn't have been more wrong. As we drill, the air around us grows heavier with anticipation. The relentless grinding of the drill pierces the Antarctic silence, each rotation burying further into the unknown. Standing in the control room, I watch the progress on the monitors, the numbers ticking up as we delve deeper, the hum of machinery in a constant companion in this frozen wasteland a reminder of our unyielding quest. Another 20 meters down and we'll break the record, calls out Dr. Martinez, her eyes never leaving the screen. There is a mix of pride and apprehension in her voice. Yeah, but what are we going to find? Murmurs Thompson, the engineer, his hands fidgeting with a wrench. He glances at me, seeking reassurance. I offer a shrug. My doubts mirroring his. Later that night, the drill suddenly halts. 
its steady rhythm replaced by an eerie stillness that envelops the facility. It just stopped? No warning? I ask, my voice barely above a whisper. Dr. Martinez nods, her usual confidence replaced with a hint of fear. We hit something, or the trail gave out. We need to check it out. In the morning, we gear up for the trek to the trailing site. The cold bites at my face as we step outside. The stark whiteness blinding. I lead the way, the crunch of snow underfoot the only sound in the vast emptiness. We shouldn't have pushed so hard. Thompson mutters beside me, his breath a cloud of vapor. Or maybe this is exactly what we're here for, counters Dr. Martinez. Her determination a stark contrast to our apprehension. Approaching the drill site, the towering machinery looms like a sentinel against the stark landscape. The trail itself is motionless, an abrupt end to its relentless journey. What do you think it is? I ask, more to break the silence than anything. Dr. Martinez shrugs, her eyes scanning the eyes. Let's find out. We gather around the trailhead, peering into the borehole. The air is tense with anticipation, each of us holding our breath as we peer into the abyss. I nod, a knot of anxiety tightening in my stomach. Yet, as I gaze into the depths, I can't shake the feeling that some doors are meant to remain closed. The moment the drill shudders to a halt, I know we've hit something monumental. Peering into the icy chasm, my heart races. There, beneath layers of ancient ice, lies an object so massive and otherworldly that it defies all my scientific understanding. Its surface is covered in symbols that look like no language or script I've ever seen. Look at this! It's huge! And these markings, they're like nothing on earth! exclaims Dr. Martinez, her voice trembling with excitement and a tinge of fear. Yeah, but what is it? A meteorite? An ancient artifact? Thompson, our engineer, chimes in, his eyes wide with disbelief. The facility buzzes with nervous energy. Everyone has a theory, but none seem to fit what we see. This isn't just another rock. It's a relic from a time so ancient, it's almost mythical. As we continue to observe, the ground beneath us starts to tremble. It's a slow, rhythmic pulsing at first growing stronger with each passing moment. Cracks spiderweb across the ice, and a chilling mist envelops us. Earthquake? Or something else? I murmur more to myself than anyone else. Dr. Martinez grabs my arm, her grip tight. John, do you feel that? It's like... it's communicating with us. I close my eyes and focus. Images and emotions flood my mind. Alien, yet oddly familiar. It's as if the giant below us is reaching into our souls. We've awakened something beyond our understanding, I say. The reality of our discovery starts to sink in. This isn't just a scientific breakthrough. It's a turning point in human history. As the ice fractures, Revealing more of the colossal object, a sense of dread washes over me. We stand at the edge of an abyss, staring into a truth hidden for millennia. It's not just a rock, it is something else, Dr. Martinez says, her voice filled with wonder and horror. I look at the team, and their faces a mix of excitement and terror. We've crossed into uncharted territory. A realm where our understanding of the world is being rewritten. We were just in confusion about what had happened. And the ground beneath us started to rumble again. A low growl that quickly escalated into a violent tremor. I stumble, trying to keep my balance as the ice around us cracks and shifts. The sound is deafening, like the world is splitting apart. Watch out! 
I hear Thompson shout as a massive shot of ice breaks free from the glacier, plummeting toward him. We scatter, but not fast enough. The ice crashes down and a cloud of snow and debris engulfs us. When it settles, I see Dr. Martinez kneeling beside one of our geologists, Simon, who's clutching his leg. His leg's pinned! She yells over the roar of the collapsing ice. I rush over, my heart pounding. The ice has trapped Simon's leg, and I can see blood staining the snow. Hold on, Simon. We're going to get you out of this. I say, trying to sound more confident than I feel. Thompson is already at work, trying to lever the ice off with a piece of debris. We need to get him back to base, now! Dr. Martinez nods, her face pale. John, we need to evacuate. This whole area could come down any second. I take a deep breath, looking around at the chaos. The awakening giant below us is causing the ice to destabilize. We're in immediate danger. Okay, let's move. We need to get Simon to safety and regroup at the base. Thomas and I manage to free Simon's leg, and together with Dr. Martinez, we create a makeshift stretcher using our jackets and some sturdy poles. Simon groans as we lift him, but he gives a weak nod, understanding the situation's urgency. Everyone back to the base, now! I call out to the rest of the team, who are scattered around the site, observing the phenomenon with a mixture of awe and horror. We need to move fast and stay together! The ground continues to shake, and every sound of cracking ice sends a jolt of fear through me. We move as quickly as we can, supporting Simon and keeping a wary eye on the unstable landscape around us. When we finally see the lights of the base, it feels like a beacon of hope in the midst of chaos. In the control room, a sense of urgency envelops us as the monitors start displaying a sequence of symbols and texts. It's like the giant is broadcasting on a frequency we've just learned to tune into. Look at this, says Dr. Martinez, pointing to the screen where the symbols morph into legible text. It's translating. The giant is communicating through these frequencies. The room falls silent as we read the giant's message. I am made a sentinel, fashioned by the unseen forces of the universe, living beyond this solar system. We exchange awestruck glances. I never imagined we'd be communicating with a cosmic being like this. But why are you here? I asked him without expecting any response. I have been here for millions of years, but now you have disturbed the balance. The text showed on the monitor. In the Antarctic facilities control room, surrounded by a team of wide-eyed scientists, I stand before the monitors. They display the towering figure of the giant we've uncovered. A being not of this world. Its skin glistens like the night sky, dotted with star-like specks and swirling nebulas. I can't believe it, mutters Dr. Martinez, her voice filled with a mix of awe and fear. Taking a deep breath, I break the stunned silence. Tell us about the creation of the universe. I say, addressing the giant. The giant's response showed on the monitor. In the vast nothingness of the cosmos, a point of unimaginable density and heat existed in solitude. This singularity, a cradle of potential erupted in a cataclysmic explosion, scattering the seeds of matter and energy across the endless void. This event, your Big Bang, marked the beginning of everything. Stars ignited from the remnants of this explosion. Galaxies spiraled into existence. Around us, the room seems to pulse with the rhythm of creation. The birth of stars and galaxies playing out before our eyes. A visual symphony of the universe's inception. And life? How did it begin? Thompson asks, in wonder and apprehension. Life is the universe's greatest mystery. It sparked from the union of elements nurtured by stars. On your Earth, it began in the warm waters. The first cells were the ancestors of all life on your planet. A continuous chain of existence that led to the diversity you see today. The room feels alive with the history of life. 
an ancestral connection that tugs at our very DNA. I press on, driven by an insatiable need to understand. What are the cosmic forces that shape our universe? The universe is woven by fundamental forces. Gravity, an unseen architect, molds galaxies and binds celestial bodies. Electromagnetism is the force that illuminates the cosmos, giving light to your world. The strong and weak nuclear forces govern the atomic matter. These forces, in their intricate interplay, create the symphony of the cosmos in a harmony of natural laws that govern everything from the smallest particle to the grandest galaxy. Its words resonate within us, a tangible portrayal of cosmic forces at play, an understanding of the universe's fundamental principles. And the secrets of the universe beyond our perception? And Dr. Martinez queries. The universe harbors dimensions and realities beyond human comprehension, or realms where time and space are mere concepts unfathomable to your current understanding. The cosmos is vast and mysterious, filled with wonders yet to be discovered, phenomena beyond your current scientific grasp. In that moment, our perception of reality expands, a glimpse into the unfathomable depths of the cosmos. Finally, I ask, how did you come to be on Earth? I was crafted by beings of profound knowledge and power, a guardian sent across the cosmos. In the infancy of your planet, they foresaw a need for protection against the darkness that dwells in the void. Molded from the essence of galaxies, I was sent to watch over Earth when every living creature on this planet was about to end. I asked him what he meant by that, and what he was talking about. The giant began the tale, and the text started showing on the monitor screen again. The Dark One, my eternal adversary, is an entity of chaos, birthed from the turbulent energies during the universe's violent inception. Its essence is destruction. Its purpose is to unravel the fabric of creation itself. Long ago, it turned its destructive gaze upon your planet, aiming to obliterate all forms of life. I lean in, my heart pounding against my chest. You fought this Dark One? I asked him. The Dark One's arrival was like the unfurling of a dark cosmic storm, its energies clashing against the natural order of your world. It unleashed forces beyond the understanding of any living being at the time. The dinosaurs, creatures that had reigned supreme for millions of years, found themselves in the midst of a battle they could not comprehend. The air in the control room seems to grow colder as the giant continues. The Dark One's power was not merely physical, but metaphysical, warping the very fabric of reality. It caused the skies to darken as if the universe itself was recoiling from its venom. The sun was obscured by a thick, impenetrable veil of ash and debris, ejected into the atmosphere by the violent clashes and the massive volcanic eruptions triggered by the Dark One's presence. I found my voice, barely above a whisper. What happened to the dinosaurs? The dinosaurs, despite their might and majesty, were powerless against such cataclysm. The environmental upheaval was swift and merciless. The skies darkened, temperatures plummeted, and the earth was plunged into a prolonged winter. The once lush and vibrant landscapes turned barren and inhospitable, as the sun's life-giving warmth was blotted out. The giant pauses, its telepathic voice heavy with ancient sorrow. The impact on the biosphere was catastrophic. Food chains were collapsed. The once abundant vegetation withered and died in the cold and darkness. Herbivores starved, and the carnivores soon followed. The ocean too was not spared. Acid rain and drastic temperature shifts led to mass extinction of marine life. The dinosaurs, along with countless other species, perished in what would be one of the darkest chapters of your planet's history. The text continued to show on the monitor screen, together with the telepathic voice. Though I eventually managed to repel the Dark One, 
the damage inflicted upon your world was irreversible. The era of the dinosaurs ended, paving the way for new life forms to evolve. But the scars of that ancient conflict remained etched in the very fabric of your planet. We sit in silence, each processing what we've just heard. The extinction of the dinosaurs, an event shrouded in mystery for so long, now takes on a new chilling context. When I thought the giant had told us everything, he then gave us a chilling warning of upcoming doom. By awakening me, you have inadvertently signaled to the Dark One my presence. The giant conveys with a foreboding tone. It now knows where I am, and it will come. I fear I am too weak in this time to defend your world. A heavy silence descends upon us, the gravity of our actions dawning on each of us. We've unearthed a garden of earth and set the stage for a cosmic battle of unimaginable proportions. The tale of the last great battle suddenly feels immediate in a dire forewarning what could unfold. The air in the control room grew colder. We were looking at each other's faces when more words appeared on the screen. You must understand that your actions have consequences beyond your comprehension. You have disturbed a cosmic balance. The giant continues. I feel a knot of dread in my stomach, my colleagues exchanging uneasy glances. What do you mean by cosmic balance? I ask, seeking clarity in the face of this overwhelming revelation. My consciousness is connected to the Dark One. My awakening has sent a ripple across the cosmos. The Dark One, sensing my return, knows where I am. It is now making its way towards Earth. The screens flicker, reflecting the gravity of the giant's declaration. How long do we have before it arrives? A team member asks tensely. The Dark One will breach the veil of your world in ten years. Its approach is inevitable, like the tide drawn by the moon. The giant replies. A sense of helplessness fills the room. What once was an exciting scientific discovery now feels like a harbinger of doom. What can we do? Is there any way to prepare? I ask, clinging to a sliver of hope. To prepare is to acknowledge a fight you cannot win. Against the Dark One, you are but ants facing a storm. Even I in my prime nearly perished in our last encounter. Now I am weakened and diminished, and I doubt my ability to protect your world as I once did. Outside, the Antarctic landscape stands serene and beautiful, starkly contrasting with the nightmare that looms over humanity. We're left to grapple with the knowledge of an approaching doom. The control room of our Antarctic research facility, usually a hub of scientific curiosity, is now the stage for a heated debate. Around me, my colleagues' voices clash with urgency and fear. The world deserves to know what we've discovered insists Dr. Martinez, her voice tinged with determination and anxiety. But think of the panic it could cause, counters Dr. Thompson, his face etched with concern. Revealing this might lead to global hysteria. We need to be responsible. I stand there, feeling the weight of leadership crushing me. This isn't just about scientific discovery anymore. It's a tightrope between global awareness and mass hysteria. The responsibility of knowledge weighs heavily on us all. We keep this a secret. I announce, my voice firm but heavy with the burden of our collective decision. For now, this knowledge stays with us. We continue our research and prepare in whatever way possible. Our decision, made in this isolated sanctuary at the end of the world, is a pact of silence. The arrival of government operatives at the facility changes everything. This information is classified at the highest level, declares a stoic operative, his voice as cold as the Antarctic winds. Cease all communication about the giant and the dark one. The world is not ready for this. 
Their message is unequivocal, their threat implicit. In the following years, the burden of this silence weighs heavily on me. I watch my colleagues find solace in their work, trying to escape the haunting truth. Finding myself in a state of somber contemplation and a quiet act of defiance, I document our discovery and the giant's revelations. This manuscript, driven not by the desire for recognition, but by a profound sense of duty to humanity, becomes my coping mechanism. Despite the risks, the need to leave a record, a warning for future generation drives me. As I pen the final words, the Antarctic wind howls outside. A mournful lament for a future shrouded in uncertainty. With a heavy heart, I will seal this document, hiding it where it will one day be found.